Hi guys, uh, today with me a very special guest, uh, one of the founders of Rocket Hub, uh, Alon Hill Tuck, uh, who um, agreed to talk with me about uh, how crowdfunding works and how it uh, will soon change our society. But uh, most of all, what I'm really mm, looking forward to hear on how uh, successful crowd founders uh, on Rocket Hub use uh, the video format and why it's uh, why a crowdfunding campaign without a video just can't uh, work am i right <laughs> yeah no i mean that that's that is that is correct it's actually really interesting but it it uh, people without a uh, video or other kinds of rich media to go along with their project simply do not do as well but there, there's a reason for that, and that, that reason basically has to do with the ability to create a human connection online, right? It's, 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 uh, we're only now uh, starting to figure it out as a society, right? So the internet came along, and in the early 90s, we were, were excited about replacing everything we're doing with a digital solution. But now we've reached a point where we want to connect. And video, what we're doing right now, for example, allows me to see your face, you can see my face, I can hear your voice, you can hear my voice. There's, a, there's like a, a connection created, a relationship. And then online, you need to be able to reach out to lots of people at the same time. And really, the only way to do that is through video and voice. And video has the audio built in, so it's a fantastic format. It allows people to see you, the person, not you the HTML page and that that's actually a fundamental uh, that everyone should keep in mind as video is very very important we've seen people be around 10 times more successful with using video than when when they don't have one do you uh, have any cases of campaigns uh, that were successful that didn't use the video format yeah, yeah, they do exist, and uh, uh, you know there is a specific reason for. It. Typically, people who have campaigns that do not have video but still are successful tend to already have their whole entire audience ready to contribute. So it happens to be a very known person or a social club where you know everybody knows each other. They either play like sports together or you know they do some other kind of membership-based activity. And that page, you go online, everybody already understands what it is. But you're not going to get that many, you know, outsiders. You're not going to get that many strangers. You're not going to get that many new people because they need to connect with you. Uh, and by not giving them the opportunity to do so, you're limiting yourself. But sometimes a project says, you know what, we need $10,000 to buy, you know, new gear for our football team and we already know everybody who's going to contribute we're going to send out an email and send them to this page and they do fantastic as well is it um because you know crowdfunding is a very social uh thing it's all about right. building a, a society around your project um how much uh is there of a conversation uh between the the project leaders and and, and the founders uh, how much um, and, and, and how can be video helpful in that? Uh, that would be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love the fact you're using the word conversation because that's really what it fundamentally is about, right? It's, it has to be a conversation. Uh, a one-way street doesn't really work because people are contributing for so many different reasons that they need to feel that, that bond. Uh, typically, uh, the you know the creators of the project, the, the project leaders, or or campaign owners, whatever way you want to describe it, they tend to find a way to make it personal, and that's a way for them to have that conversation with those who are contributing. So they could say, yeah, let's say they're an entrepreneur, and they're building uh, a new product. Let's say it's an umbrella. I don't know. They might say, this is why I'm building an umbrella. Here's my personal story that inspired me to do this. And this is what is driving me to make this happen for other people or what, what I'm trying to accomplish. And that's, in a way, starting that conversation. And then people are able to respond by contributing, by commenting on the message boards, or sending out some other form of an email. And, and the interesting part is some of those conversations are public, some are private. But almost all of them have some form of a public face, right? So 
Uh, I might know that you contributed. I might not know how much because I'm an outside person, but I can see, hey, you know, five people contributed and some of them are my friends. They must see something that I don't. So let me take a closer look. So it's all about conversations. This whole thing is, is storytelling. It's like taking a journey together. And, the, the, you know, the, the conversation that happens around crowdfunding, uh, in my opinion, it's something that uh, can grow out of the crowdfunding platforms. Um, sure. the, I mean, there are so many ways that the idea of crowdfunding uh, can influence the way our society works. Yeah. And um, can you say that, uh, I mean, do you already see uh, examples of, of, of your um, users uh, using the, the maybe the platform for not crowdfunding connected reasons. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, it's you're, you're touching on an interesting point, and it's the word crowdfunding itself is kind of outdated and mainly used by like early, you know, majority people who don't really understand the space too well. It's really more about social funding, right? So when we look at that social component, I mean, our site we've had politicians raise funds using our platform. We've had Uh, social entrepreneurs raise funds for emerging markets and regions. Uh, we've had the U.S. government partner with us to raise money for political initiatives uh, around the globe. We even had very large companies use our platform to to not raise funds but to help people buy products socially. You know, like uh, the Dodge Dart car from Chrysler was a socially purchased car. It was the first one in history. And, you know, that, that allowed people to get together and buy a car for somebody. And it worked. We had 70 million impressions just for that one campaign. And when you look at it like that, you start saying, gee, you know, consumerism, buying inherently is social. You know, why do we go to one store versus another? It makes us feel a certain way. We have a relationship with that place or that brand reflects the type of person I want to be. Those are all social reasons. So, you know, a lot of what we do is social and then we start realizing that platforms like Rocket Hub are providing that tool in a social fashion online, there are so many different things we've seen. I mean, we've had medical research done through our platform. It's, it's kind of incredible. You can see a politician on one side raising funds and then a, a scientist and a professor from a university raising funds at the same time for two different initiatives that have no relation whatsoever with each other. But they both are able to exist on the same platform. So from what you saw so far, uh, I know it's hundreds of thousands of projects. Uh, yeah. Would you say that there is something that you, that there is anything you could not uh, do crowdfunding for? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're a little bit unique in the space. Uh, you know, we're going to take an open platform approach to projects. We allow anybody to kind of launch a project and then this, the crowd curates it, which is, I think other people are now starting to follow that mechanism as well, but a lot of other platforms used to be closed. Uh, but we do require it to be legal and in good taste. And what that means is we want it to be uh, so that anybody from any age group really can browse the site and be in a safe environment. Uh, and that is something we do check for, so we don't allow certain types of projects that, that may not be appropriate for people who are of a younger age. And then if you're violating any U.S. laws, then we cannot permit it. Now, United States have different laws than other countries, but we, we're incorporated in the U.S., so we follow U.S. laws. So we obviously don't allow people to raise funds for, like, drugs or things of that nature. And so nobody should really be allowing anyone to do that because there's no medical oversight, right? So, you know, those kinds of projects obviously are not permitted. And, you know, we work with um, a lot of creative people, uh, content creators that uh, do amazing stuff uh, for their YouTube channels or, or other, you know, social networks where they, where they, where they post their video work. And... Uh, Those are very talented people, but at some point, everyone has to make a living. And right. um, as long as you're not a you know, YouTube celebrity, 
it's sometimes pretty hard to to get advertisers um, look at you at you as a good place to to, to invest sure. uh, your your advertising budget and um, I think that crowdfunding here could be uh, for the so-called you know long tail of content creators online could be a very good way to um, you know engage people and and yeah. actually raise some money for your for your work but then on the other hand it's uh, something that is not commercial so uh, you if you are an artist or a content creator there are there is a limited uh, amount of things you can offer. Uh, what would you What would you advise to to people uh, that are just yeah. artists or content creators? Uh, how could they use uh, Rocket Hub to, to 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 raise funding for their for the for the work they do? Sure. I mean, art, artists actually have more value than most people perceive, right? So there's the common misconception that crowdfunding really is for people who are trying to pre-sell a product, and that's actually. Uh, not what crowdfunding is about. I mean, the pre-sale model has been around for years. I mean, Amazon has its own pre-order waitlist system. There's a fundamental difference with what we're doing. And with uh, artists, what's fascinating is they always undervalue themselves. Uh, they, o they overvalue or value their work appropriately, but they always undervalue who they actually are themselves. And we've seen amazing examples of ways that people have become very creative with the value exchange they can provide through a campaign. We've had musicians provide singing lessons, you know. Uh, we've had uh, filmmakers allow people to come on set. Uh, that's, not, that's not, you know, a, uh, a product, that's an experience. And what artists have is high-end experiences. Now, it's not easily scalable, so those are priced pretty high. You know, a like come on set might be $500 or $800, but people pay it. People pay it, and, and, and if you're creating, let's say, an exhibit, uh, you, can, uh, you can have an, a producer of the exhibit, an executive curator that could be a person who contributed, um, a VIP tour, or... Uh, a wing of the exhibit will have their name on it, like this section of the exhibit is provided to you by, you know, whomever. There's a lot of ways to, to actually monetize and celebrate who you are that uh, we're, we're all kind of losing touch with. Because what, what is more important for a lot of people is to feel part of what you are doing. And by providing that ability to feel part of what, what you are doing as an artist, uh, you, you're raising your funds. You, you absolutely are raising your funds. Uh, be creative as a creative, right? So really think about who I and what do I do and, and how can I interact with people in a meaningful way. So from what you're, from what you're saying, I, I can hear that um, crowdfunding can be seen uh, as an event. Yeah. Uh, and then... How how much is there in, in, in as you see Rocket Hub? Uh, is it more a marketplace or a social uh, network, social platform? Yeah, right. So it's interesting because the modern day marketplace is very sterile, right? So uh, we're definitely not that. Um, ways we are a network and a marketplace at the same time. It's it's just it's it's making it social again. It's it, we we went the last ten years. Technology is all about removing the human components. It's it's incredible. Uh, everything we've done is finding ways to minimize contact. I mean, voicemail is voice, and it's hardly ever used anymore by people. Uh, you know, there's so there's so uh, many reductionary technologies out there to remove as much as possible of the human component. Uh, I mean, in New York, I don't have to go to a supermarket anymore to get food. I don't have to uh, go to a restaurant to get food. I don't have to even go to a video store to rent a video anymore. It's all done in my house, in my control, without interaction with other people. And, and what we've kind of done is to say, you know what, like, we are, as the world, a, a, a group of people who build. We create. We create art. We create, you know, music, products businesses and we're social creatures so let's make it social again let's make it a social marketplace let's find a way to actually uh, not just celebrate your brand but kind of find a way to t 
tell your story together. And you're right, it's an event. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. The campaign does not run forever. There is an end. And that, that, that ending is kind of uh, you know, celebratory in a lot of ways, and it motivates people to contribute. The biggest problem with the regular donate button that you see on a lot of you know, nonprofits is you don't have to donate now. Right, you, 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 they might say like contribute, and you say I can contribute tomorrow. I can contribute next week. Eventually, you forget, or you just stop doing it. But because it's an event, you will lose your opportunity eventually, and that that actually makes it very, very interesting. It taps into uh, the psychology of of who we are and how we want to participate with other people. And uh, what about? the other side of the uh, crowdfunding crowd, so the entrepreneurs, because, you know, I'm, we're at VU here in the middle of some uh, fundraising activities. We are doing it the traditional way, talking to uh, investors, individuals, and, and, and funds, and my experience is that it's really painful. Yeah. Uh, it takes a, a lot of your time away, and I'm always thinking, yeah. like, Hey, I could be, you know, doing actual work for the company and making it grow right. instead of having that, uh, you know, uh, talks over and over and over. And um, I'm at that point when I'm starting to think, hey, maybe crowdfunding would be a better idea. Just, you know, to go out and 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 you know make people have part of my company, but uh, also make it grow. Maybe in a way, I. I, I I cannot imagine. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's the ultimate test of success, and it's the ultimate test of failure, right? So it's it, you're making yourself social. You you're putting yourself out there, um, meeting venture capitalists, meeting an angel that you you like them. They like you. Maybe something will work out if your model is good. Fantastic. But if it doesn't work out. No one else was in on that meeting. Nobody else saw what you discussed, and it's over. That's not the case with crowdfunding. It is very public. But the good, hardworking entrepreneurs who have an idea and are good communicators should be able to find a way to make that work. In fact, it's no longer an obstacle. It's an empowerment tool, right? So a lot of times when people are afraid of it, they need to think to themselves, why am I? afraid what is it about it I don't like and if what you don't like about it is fail you could fail you really shouldn't be an entrepreneur in the first place because you're going to be experiencing that feeling every week if not every day if not you know every month depends on how you're doing and how lucky and smart you are but you know the fascinating part of what we're doing now in crowdfunding is there's an evolutionary step where uh, move in the very near future and it's already starting now you're going to be able to get investments, right? So you can put up your idea and say, I need to raise $5 million, and this is how much my company is worth, this is the investment structure I'm proposing, and you're going to be able to pull funds from the crowd. And that was never before possible in history. In the U.S., for example, it has been banned and made illegal since 1934. And only recently have the laws been changed. That's that's 80 years that it was illegal for a regular person to directly invest in a company. That's mind blowing. So suddenly now this is going to be possible. You're going to be able to interact with people. It's going to change the capital markets in a very very big way because suddenly angel investors are not worth as much as they used to be. There's a lot of angels in the world who are only worth the value of their money, which means they're really not worth much, right? Money, money is not always what you need, and um, now suddenly they're going to be faced with the problem of, gee, we're no longer competitive with the crowd. The crowd will invest the same amount of funds, sometimes on a better deal term. It's going to be a huge cleansing of the early stage seed market, where we're going to be removing a lot of these angels. And only the best, only the ones who provide more than just their money are going to survive. So it's not it's, uh, it's not smart money anymore. It's social smart money, which is even you know even better. Yeah, it's even better because think about it. Let's say uh, 
you know, you're in Berlin and you're, you're, you have a local coffee place you go to and they raise money and you invest in them. Where do you think you're going to get your coffee every day? It's that coffee shop. You're going to be the most loyal customer on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> so suddenly, they, they don't just have an investor, they have a customer for life. That's way better than an, an angel who's going to call you up every month and ask how the metrics are. It's much better. Because you're going to tell your friends, like, I want you guys to come to me to this coffee place. I'm an investor in it. Imagine being able to take your friends to that coffee place and say, I invested in this place. That's incredible. Like, that's an amazing feeling you're going to be able to get that you're not allowed to have just yet. So that's suddenly like the social. That's possible. And you're going to have, like, we've had bars wanting to raise funds with us, like, everything out there and regular businesses as well. And, and when you think about it, you say, gee, you know, this is actually really interesting because uh, we're going to have a lot of people out there that are going to be very, very loyal, supportive individuals of the business. Now, look, if the business doesn't do as well, there's going to be a, a big management issue because you might have a thousand investors saying, we're, you know, why is the business failing? But if you're a good communicator, you can turn that into here's how you can help. And... You know, there's a lot of ways a thousand people can help you that is more impactful than one, right? One who has just out there that are going to be very, very beneficial moving forward. They, they understand how to structure businesses. They understand how to develop new de business development leads, sales, product. They know where you can hire people and experts. Those kinds of investors, always worth it. They, 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 they're more expensive, their money. But their, their, their value is there. But there, you notice there's a lot of people out there who just like investing and they right now happen to be rich angels, so they're doing it, but that's all they are, is rich people with money. And you don't want those kinds of people. You want those who care about your business and believe in what you're doing. And by making this social, we're going we're gonna to be seeing that. It's going to be very, very interesting. You mentioned Berlin, and I'm wondering if uh, you see... Uh, a significant difference between how crowdfunding campaigns uh, are done in the United States, in Europe, and you know may maybe some other places in the world. Because your yeah. uh, Rocket Hub is now present in almost 200 countries. Is that yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so the United States is a very unique market. Um, the credit card is ubiquitous, right? So. People here spend. <laughs> they spend a lot, and uh, sometimes more than they should, as we saw a few years ago. And uh, they spend on debt, right? A credit card is not cash. When you swipe your credit card, you promise that you'll pay at the end of the month, right? And that's how we spend here. We're we're okay with this, which is insane. Uh, you know, we're okay using every day. I I I use my credit card to buy like a bottle of water in the store. So I, I'm creating a debt agreement for a dollar. Like it's, it's, it's it, it, you know, it, it's bonkers. But because of that, we have a lot of very advanced payment technologies online that are very secure, very sophisticated. Our users are comfortable with it. We, we like to, you know, contribute in ways and, you know, we find alternative means of payments okay like Douala does direct to bank Stripe is like the most developer friendly payments tool I've ever seen on the planet and um, you know we're okay using it Germany not so much Germany like the biggest thing we get is everybody wants to use PayPal everybody wants to use PayPal and you know their PayPal is a very interesting company they're one of the first adopters uh, they're getting, they're running a little bit behind everybody else when it comes to technology and definitely support. And the issue we have is, you know, they're a closed system. You know, if you're you're, you're either part of PayPal or you're not, play. So we do accept PayPal, but the, the issue with Germany is you have to, you cannot introduce new technologies to the Germans. Like they freak out. They say, this is what I'm used to, this is what's safe, this is what I'm going to use. If you don't have it, I'm everything. So there's going to be some slower adoption because of that. But what, what's really fascinating about the German market is, first off, it's a massive country. It's well-developed. 
has a, very, a relatively good social structure. The entrepreneurs are able to launch their businesses in relative safety. There's less risks you have to take. But the people wanting to contribute aren't risk takers. It's a very risk adverse society, I've noticed, right? Everything has to be calculated, everything has to be predicted, projected. And uh, when it comes to raising capital for an entrepreneur, not just crowdfunding, but just investing or starting a business, you're, you, it's kind of like you have this barrier that is your culture. I know. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. I hear you. So, yeah. So uh, I'm sorry you're going through that, but it, it's tough because you have, you, you guys, there's so many great ideas that coming out of these pockets. And Berlin is definitely a hot spot for that. And it's, it's, uh, society is not recognizing it just yet. Uh, they like to recognize established players, right? Like the, the pride and joys are, you know, well-made machines. So what? Like make a new machine, like find a new product. There's less of an encouragement to do that. They'd rather see a large company innovate and create a new product and a new company create a radically different way of doing it. So when you realize that, it, there's a lot of other friction points in the market. But what the beautiful thing is, the German entrepreneur has found a way to solve for that. And they found ways to make it work to the best of their ability. They either f find resources in Germany or they go outside of Germany. Uh, you know, our offices are right here in Midtown uh, Manhattan. And we have like 10 German entrepreneurs that, that work in the space right across us. People are finding ways to make it work. Uh, now, naturally, Germany would, should want to keep its innovation as much as possible in Germany, and that's something that to solve together with the governments. Um, and that governments are slow, but if you find the right people, there are ways to make that work. Uh, you know, co -work, uh, uh, proper co-working spaces is a first example I would always use is create a hub, find the most successful German companies. Maybe not Rocket Space because they tend to copy every American innovation out there over and over and over. But you find another company that's really actually doing their own innovation and not copying, and you put them in a co-working space, and you create lectures, educational series, and bring German entrepreneurship to a new level of understanding, and you, you'll be able to start creating a solution. And before we finish, uh, I would like to go back to the video. Uh, talking about video, um, we now see that uh, live video streaming and live video events uh, get more and more popular. Uh, can you imagine that uh, the also how you know crowdfunding works on, on, on Rocket Hub could evolve to, to um, a situation where you have a fundraising event just done live for you know just one hour and whatever happens you know you, you just have this one hour or, or ten hours but it's all live would you would you think that this would uh, be a good idea is this possible yeah it is I mean we we already see it so we have live events now that happen with crowdfunding attached so you know Rocket Hub is uh, a very big and comprehensive platform. Most people don't realize just how much it actually does. Um, you know what most individuals see is our consumer side, but on our commercial side, when we work with other brands, we do live events all the time. So the Dodge Dart campaign I mentioned earlier, those are those uh, incorporate advertisements during the NFL playoffs, where millions of people are watching television, and it create an opportunity for them to interact. Um, we've had live events with virtual currency cards where people were given cards in their bags and they were able to, during an event for one hour, there were tablets everywhere and they were able to contribute to a campaign live. Uh, taking that a step further, I do believe that there will be one day, um, like almost like uh, you know, like an AMA event with Reddit, you know, like, like there will be uh, a live stream session for people raising funds where they say you can ask me any question and I'll happy to answer it. Uh, now, when that is going to happen for equity, for raising you know capital, that's a little bit different because you have regulatory bodies there like the SEC and FINRA and groups that really don't like you 
you know, making a misstatement. And I think entrepreneurs are going to be a little worried they're going to say the wrong thing. So there is going to be a few moments like, but we still have to make a solution for it, and there isn't one yet. Okay. Yeah. Sounds really interesting, and I'm excited to, to you know to see it happening actually. Yeah, we're in the moment. And so. uh, yeah, I just wanted to thank you for you know sharing all this uh, knowledge and your experience. This is really this was really interesting. And oh my. Uh, I what what else can I say? I hope to see you uh, sometime again soon. Yeah, just uh, if the campaigning summit will have me back, I'll see you guys. I sure. mean, you're 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 you know definitely more than welcome to <laughs> to the Warsaw <laughs> one. Uh, we are still not uh, not uh, sure on the date, but it's uh, it's somewhere around December uh, in, in Warsaw. So I'll be getting back to you uh, for sure. Yeah, keep, uh, keep me in the loop. It's uh, the the these these summits. Summits are very, very interesting for many, many different reasons, and it, it, it fundamentally has to do with the fact that campaigners have done this social game for so many years, and people don't even realize it. Like there's so much knowledge in that room that uh, ha if you unify, you can direct it towards everything. I mean, crowdfunding it, it was done for presidential campaigns in the United States. You know, the the we have it now. It's not online. Packs. It's not online. Yeah. Yeah, super PACs are raising funds on our yeah. site, on our system. Like it's it, it's here, and, and they do they they are uh, not different. They're very much the same thing. And once people realize, powering moments. Yeah. Hello again. Thank you very much for for sure. for your time. Uh, and uh, thanks everyone for for listening to us. Because uh, you know it's. Uh, it has been a long, long video, uh, much longer than the traditional YouTube video should be. But I think, uh, I think it's worth, uh, it's worth the time. Uh, and yeah, thanks again, and uh, see you soon. Thank you. See you soon. Bye bye.